Okay, so in this video, I'm going to be sharing with you five very quick Python automation projects that you can finish in literally one weekend to hone your skills and help you become a real Python developer. This series on Python automation has been wildly popular on my channel. And I think for good reason, because I think you guys are realizing by now is that to be a real developer, you don't want to be building Mickey Mouse projects like most people do. The thing that employers look for and what differentiates a coder from a real developer is the ability to apply your coding skills to real world problems. And what better way to get started with this than to build projects using Python to literally automate your life and build yourself an army of minions to do boring tasks for you. That is exactly what we are learning in this video. All right, so the first thing we'll be looking at is being able to use Python to read and manipulate the CSV files. Taking in data and having the skill of being able to read and manipulate it using Python was one of the most common things I was doing and one of the most common skills that you will need to have in your arsenal as a developer. Using Python, you will have access to a library called CSV, which you can import using the normal import statement using Python. And for this example, we're writing a simple finance manager where I'm basically taking a CSV file of transactions, which I've got right here. And then the goal is to extract the information that we actually care about, like for example, the date, the name and the amount of the transactions, not have to deal with all of these things like transaction IDs and a lot of this other stuff that you really don't care about. What we're gonna do is define this function called finance manager, which is simply gonna take in a file name. We're gonna start off with a sum that's initialized to zero because what we're gonna be want to do is to actually sum the transactions from the entire month. And then the, the crucial function that we need to use is provide with open with the file and then mode is going to be r which means read so we only want to be reading the file rather than writing it. if we wanted to write something into the file you would use w over here we're going to go r and then as csv file and we're going to initialize a variable called csv reader by calling csv dot reader and the CSV file inside of it. And we're gonna give the CSV file as a parameter. Now the CSV reader is basically a reader that allows us to read this file and do a bunch of things to it from the CSV library. So this is what we're gonna be using most of the time. We're gonna skip the header by calling it next because basically in this file, we have this header file that we don't actually want because this is not an actual transaction. We, we're just sort of storing it here, even though we're not gonna use it because we just wanna skip over it so that when we start looping over these rows using this for loop over here, we're not gonna be going over the header file at all. Then we, what we want, what, what I want, you might be interested in some other information. I just want the name and the amount of the currency. And then I'm gonna go to the file and look at which of these columns are the things that we want. So it's gonna be index number one, index number, two, three, four, and index number five, six, seven, I believe. Then we're gonna create this transaction tuple using these variables that we just got from the file. And we're gonna add to the sum, the amount of the transaction, and then to this transactions list, which should probably actually be defined somewhere in here. So we initialize, we're gonna just append the transaction itself. And at the end, we're gonna print the sum of all the transactions is whatever it is. We're gonna print an empty line and then we're gonna return the transaction and at the end we're gonna try running this. Basically, this is just an F string. Don't worry if you're not familiar with this. You could literally just go uh, Monzo and then just input the file like this. And when we run this, we should get the sum of the transactions was this much and these are all the transactions we had. If you're interested in doing something with CSVs, I will leave all of this code down below that you can use as a starting point and then based on what you want to create, based on what's interesting to you, you can use these same concepts to do a lot more things. For example, the startup that I'm building right now is a personal finance app where I am essentially using a lot of these same functions, a lot of these same tools to take in CSV transactions from the users and then send that data in the format that I want based on my app to allow me to then visualize it for the user in different kinds of ways. So that's just an example of a real world use case for these skills. With that, let's move on to the next one. So project number two is a desktop cleaner. Basically, if you've ever been in a situation where your desktop looks like this, then this is gonna be an interesting project for you. I've defined several different paths to different folders based on the type of file that I want to be sent to these different folders. I've defined a source directory, which is gonna be in my downloads folder. This could be your de desktop or whatever. And then I've defined these lists, which I'm gonna leave down below in the code section for different 
file extensions based on the file type. So we know that every file type that has one of these extensions is going to be an image. Every one that has one of these extensions is going to be a video. And then we have this unclean function, which is the main function. This function is going to run. And then with scanner, with the source directory as entries, this function in here, which we have imported from the OS library in Python is going to actually take every file in this directory and it's going to return it to you as a list and then we're going to loop through that list with a for loop get the name using entry.name and you would find how to do this in the documentation and everything like that and then we're going to run this function called check audio check video check image files and check document files and all of these are basically functions to check whether that file is a video or an audio or an image or a document file for example for this one it's going to loop through all the extensions in the video extensions list it's going to check whether the name ends with that extension to determine whether it's a video file or not and if it is it's going to run this move file function which is going to move that file into the video destination folder which we have simply defined for us right there and the move file function simply looks like this first it's going to check whether that file already exists if it does it's going to do this function to like make the name unique and a bunch of stuff that's like not that important and then after that is going to run the move function which is simply a function that is imported from the shuttle library that is how that project works and then i have a more complicated version of this that i actually use in my literally everyday life there's a full tutorial on that on my channel but basically you can expand this to have this be running automatically at all times and then automatically whenever something goes into my downloads folder it's gonna run this and it's gonna move into the correct folder it's pretty cool once you learn to do this i actually had this on my github and it's become sort of an open source project and a lot of you have been helping Helping me with this just bear in mind if you watch the tutorial it's a pretty old video so the version i have there is not quite as optimal as it could be with that let us move on to project three an email sender this is also going to introduce us to apis and the api that i use to send emails is something called mail gun let's go on here uh, you get, I believe, yeah, 5,000 emails a month for free. You would go and click on get started for free, and then you will get an account. And the easiest way for you to get started, you go on sending an overview, then click select API. Uh, you're gonna get the starter code, like you'd literally just copy it, and this is essentially gonna allow you to use it, but I just did it my way. Uh, you copy this line from here, as a variable inside your program and then you find your api key which you can get by clicking on api keys on here and you would copy from here and then i believe you need to go and add yourself as a verified user for basically to allow you to send yourself emails and you would do that by clicking on here and just entering your email address and then saving it by the way with your api key make sure to never show it to anyone because these are private and definitely never broadcast it to tens of thousands of people online. Um, anyway, this would be my API key right here. Then we would define the function called send email, takes in the to email uh, subject and the body, which we define down here. And then we run the function with those. Uh, and here we created this data object and you'll find how to use this and all of this by simply going into the mail gun documentation. We're going to define a response object, which is going to be a post request with this is going to actually send that post request and it's going to check whether the status of uh, the response is 200, meaning it was successful. It's going to print that the email was sent successfully. Otherwise, if there's something wrong with the network or something, it's going to give you an error. And if we try that, and I go, it looks like it succeeded, and I go to my email, and it works. Amazing stuff. Next, we have a Google Drive bulk uploader. So basically, if you have a bunch of files and you wanna upload them to Google Drive, and doing that and putting them into the correct folder is gonna be pretty annoying to do manually. So why don't we just let Python do it for us? I've made this program for us, and for this, we're using the Google Cloud API. I would recommend you go actually read about it and the basics of how it works. Basically, a lot of this code right here is directly from the Google Cloud documentation. But basically, this function here, basically just creates a connection between us and the google cloud and before this you would have to go on something called google cloud console you would create an account on here then it would 
go on to your projects up here you would go on apis and services search for google drive you click on enable to actually enable the ability to use google drive api then you would go hover over apis and services click on credentials click on create credentials oauth client id you would basically just go through some of these fields and then eventually you would be able to download this json file which has a bunch of credentials for you to actually allow you to manipulate google drive and other stuff using your python code you would save it in the same folder as your program with the name of credentials.json but make this exact function to create the connection which is going to return credentials to actually allow you to then start doing a bunch of cool stuff and this other function here is actually going to do the task of uploading a file from your computer to your google drive and then this function here which is going to be the outer function that we run you're going to take the path to the directory it's going to get the files using os.listdir and then it's going to loop over those files and for all of them it's going to run the upload file function which basically first creates a service with google drive and then it tries to do a bunch of stuff to actually do it and like the details of this is going to be the google drive api documentation and at the end it's going to do it if there's an error it's going to return this accept course right here oh and by the way last thing you would need to find is this folder id which you would go to your google drive you would go on google drive and you would open the folder that you want your files to be uploaded to and then the folder id is basically in your url is going to be this string of text right here after the folder slash you're going to copy this into your code and then basically as long as you have to find the correct path to upload stuff from which for me is this one uh, we're gonna now run this to see if it works hopefully i didn't make any stupid mistakes and voila it is right there isn't that magical if it is magical hit the like button <laughs> and last but not least we have an investing return calculator or like a wealth tracking calculator essentially this is something that i personally find pretty cool because i'm really into personal finance and the software app the software startup that i'm using is a personal finance startup so that's why a lot of these examples are based on personal finance basically whenever you have savings let's say you're saving five thousand dollars a month and you invest it based on the return and the rate of return of your investments you can calculate how much money you're going to have over a certain period of time basically we have two different programs in here we have calculate wealth by year so it's going to take in your current wealth the current rate of return that you expect how much you're saving per month and for how many years you want to calculate your wealth based on these numbers obviously this is going to change over your life and stuff but this is going to give you an idea of what's possible so we're going to first take in total savings which is going to be initialized to the current wealth and then four years from one till the year that you chose plus one it's going to calculate interest and it's going to add the interest to the total savings and at the end of it it's going to print it's going to print the total wealth at the end of each year so if you run this is first going to ask us to choose the program I can choose return a current wealth let's say i have ten thousand dollars let's say i have a seven percent return four thousand dollars a month and we're gonna carry it for 20 years basically this is pretty incredible even at this kind of savings rate at the end of 20 years i would have more than two million dollars by the looks of it and then we have this other function which is gonna allow you to calculate how many years you're gonna have to spend in your life until you are financially free which basically the answer to the question of how much money would you need to live off for the rest of your life without having to work which is my personal goal right now it's just gonna run an infinite loop uh, it's gonna keep adding the interest of the savings until we reach more than our target wealth so if we run this program i'm just gonna move that a bit uh, current well let's say we have ten thousand dollars let's in return let's say i'm saving again four thousand dollars and i and then i need five hundred thousand dollars to be financially free let's say that's my number it will tell me it will only take me eight years to be financially free even at the savings rate which is pretty incredible and the way i'm doing this thing where it's choosing the programming stuff basically i'm gonna do this input function i'm first gonna ask the user which of these two programs it wants to run if they choose to run the return, it's going to run the return function. If they choose freedom, it's going to ask still for the target wealth. And then it's going to run the calculate year still freedom function right here. And actually this year is only relevant in here. So we're going to put that there. 
and basically yeah here it's just asking for those variables simply using the input function and then the casting functions to make the strings into floats and yeah so if you're in a situation where you maybe you watch this video and you're feeling like you're not quite confident enough in your coding abilities to maybe go out there and create something like this on your own or you watch this and you're like okay what does that function do why did it choose this why did it call that thing like that so if that is you and you want to actually master the python programming language you might be interested in my new program python developer masterclass where i break down the skill of programming into its constituent parts and teach you programming in a way that you will actually understand it in a very logical way and you will have this whole new part of your brain that actually understands how programming works under the hood the problem i have with most coding courses is they focus too much on syntax and just like memorizing these random functions without actually taking the time to actually explain what is happening under the hood why are we using these things what do you actually need to know what do you not need to know so that is why I developed the program. It's designed specifically to teach you the foundations of programming, combine it with lots and lots of practice. And I also include 10 ideas for actual portfolio projects that have been proven to get people jobs in the past. Because I'm gonna be honest, even if you take the course and all you do is watch the videos and you don't do any of the practice that I tell you to do, you're not going to learn coding. I'm not gonna give you fluff. I'm gonna give you all the skills and all the support that you need to go from even completely zero to actually being a real developer and understanding the character traits that actual real developers need to possess from my own experience of being a professional and seeing what makes a good developer in the real world. I've also expanded the course with a full Notion-based Python developer playbook with exercises, extra material, summaries of the core content, three developer roadmaps to get hired, and full guides to make your CV, to apply for jobs, and to prepare for interviews, and a lot more. So this and a lot more is what you get right now. But in fact, I am constantly working every single week to develop further content and further modules. There's going to be modules on web development. There's going to be modules on object-oriented programming. And the one that I'm developing right now that I'm most passionate about a full module on python automation and scripting so given everything that you'll be getting here the price of the program will be 200 dollars and probably even more in the future but right now because some of these modules are still up and coming you have the last chance ever to get this program for only 79 dollars first of all as a thank you for supporting the course early i'm planning to sell the program in other places as well beyond this channel but this discount is something that i'm only releasing to you guys the viewers of my channel basically Basically, you could go and do what's in the course now and by the time you finish it some of these other modules are already going to be out anyway so this is really the best deal that you'll ever get on this program so if you've listened to this and it sounds interesting to you but you're worried that you're going to spend your money and not get value from the course that is why i offer a 30-day money-back guarantee i only want your money if i was truly able to serve you a lot more value than what you paid for there's going to be a link down below for you to check it out but this discount is only available for the next seven days and after that you will never have the chance again to get it at this price point so that is my pitch i hope you enjoyed the tutorial i don't know why i stopped making these like this series has been so successful on my channel yeah, i think i want to make more let me know down below in the comments if you want to see more tutorials like this i'm going to link the full playlist down below and for now i recommend you go and check out this tutorial it's been the second most successful video on this channel of my lifetime with more than 500,000 views so if you haven't seen it yet clearly you are missing out on a lot so i recommend you go watch this video now go check out the course if that resonates with you and with that remember that you can code a lot more than you think i'll see you next time